represent the thick filaments myosin and the thin filaments actin. A bundle of myofibro it represents a muscle cell. The green netting represents the membrane, the sarcolemma. The ribbon with the holes represent the T-tubules which calcium can flow in and out of. A group of muscle cells put together is represented by a fascicle. A group of fascicles put together represents a whole muscle. Here we have a muscle cell with the endoplasmic reticulum wrapped around. These white represent the calcequestrin, the molecule that holds on to the calcium. This is the muscle cell. This is the nerve cell. This everything black here is the sarcolemma. This is calcium. These are receptors. These are receptors. This is the motor and plate. This is potassium. This is sodium. Um, this is describing or explaining that it's negative on the inside of the cell and positive in the sarcolemma. Here is our mitochondria. Um, this is action potential. Action potential causes depolarization to occur, so then the inside of the nerve cell is more positive than the outside. This causes the calcium to flow in through the ion channels. This sends the vesicles to the membrane and it pours out its contents, which is acetylcholine, into the synaptic cleft. The acetylcholine lines up with the receptors at the motor end plate, and this triggers the sodium to flow in and the potassium to flow out. Now it is more positive on the inside of the muscle cell, and it's more negative in the sarcolemma. Increase in the positive ions inside the muscle cell initiates an action potential on sarcolemma. Action potential travels down sarcolemma into T-tubules and stimulates the release of calcium from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm of the muscle cell. Okay. This, this is the mitochondria and this is where ATP is produced. At the end of the activation event, acetylcholinesterase breaks down the acetylcholine bound to the muscle cell. The acetylcholine is reabsorbed by the, by the presynaptic cell. This is a representation of myosin. It is a molecular motor that is responsible for the contractile action of muscle fiber. In its low energy configuration, the myosin heads are extended away from the midline Upon introduction of ATP, the myosin heads are bent toward the midline. ATP acting on myosin heads bound to actin will cause the myosin head to unbind and the myosin to return to its low energy configuration. Actin, represented here by the silver beaded double helix, is the protein fiber acted on by myosin. Troponin, the gold beads, and tropomyosin, the red wire, constitute a mechanism that regulates myosin's interaction with actin. Upon introduction of calcium, tropomyosin unbinds from troponin and exposes actin's binding sites, thereby allowing the myosin heads to adhere. As calcium is removed, tropomyosin is allowed to rebind with troponin, thereby preventing myosin binding. This balanced system allows the selective application of ATP and calcium to control the direction and action of the sarcomere.
Inside the myofibrils are a vast number of functional subunits called sarcomeres, one of which is depicted here. The thick filaments are composed of myosin, seen previously. The thin blue straws interleaving them are composed of actin. The Z-band is created by cross-linked alpha-actin that provides an anchor for actin and titan, which is not pictured. As the muscle cell is stimulated to contract, the I-band contracts as myosin walks along actin, enabled by the presence of calcium and driven by ATP. As calcium is removed from the sarcomere, additional ATP causes myosin heads to unbind from actin as usual, but without calcium, tropomyosin makes actin's binding sites unavailable, thus effectively disengaging myosin from actin and allowing the sarcomere to stretch. These processes acting en masse and in a coordinated manner allow animals to move within and manipulate their environments.